more and more there is more and more evidence again i struggle with when the recording actually starts uh, there is more and more evidence that including women in politics in family decisions in governance uh, tends to have positive impacts so in that sense gender promoting equality in fragile and conflicted conflict affected settings can only have positive outcomes uh, even in this context of food security uh, crises resilience and better responses reducing impacts and so on key messages the treatment of women is a better predictor of a state's peacefulness than its level of wealth status of democracy or ethno religious identity just think about that no matter how rich you are how treat, uh, women are treated is a better indicator of how peaceful that state is us is rich it's not been peaceful for a while because of all this internal turmoil about what to do with this candidate who is outrageous and yet seems to have a lot of support so those kind of issues are not related to peace but uh, not related to wealth uh, obviously even a rich country has all kinds of internal turmoil but how women feel uh, in terms of their gender equality etc matters of course america is much better than many other countries but still it's a, there's no baseline it's not like better or worse there is just good and bad right so with that commentary in fragile and conflict affected settings women and girls face disproportionate risks that include forced displacement and gender based violence transgender has become another big issue now as well comprehensive and systematic data to provide evidence on the gendered uh, consequences of crisis are still lacking particularly for disaster and conflicts yet disasters and conflicts yet sex and age disaggregated data are critical to understanding how crises differentially affect women and men and girls and boys monitoring whether programs are reaching and benefiting the appropriate groups and designing gender responsive interventions in terms of disaggregated data for understanding women's voices are rarely heard in disaster management despite evidence that their participation can improve outcomes including in conflict situations although women are often consulted during the needs assessment phase of response management they are not involved in the design of the project so they are stakeholders in the sense they are asked for input then they are not given agency in terms of making decisions on the design of project to improve the outcomes of crisis response responses it's important to prioritize gender targets and track progress and direct funding toward programming that promotes gender equality and women's empowerment in fragile and conflict affected settings adopt innovative methods to address the gender data gap providing mobile phone access to women can have multiplier effects enabling women to receive cash transfers directly while providing a platform for high frequency data collection and targeted information campaigns generate more evidence on violence pre prevention strategies to date few studies empirically evaluate the impact of violence prevention and response interventions in fragile and conflict affected settings but important research is underway including work by the interdisciplinary cash transfer and intimate partner violence research collaborative hosted by ifri which is the author of this report uh, ensure that women's voices are included at all levels especially in peace processes and in senior management and high level government positions where policy making and programming decisions are made india just passed an ordinance legislation to allow one third seats in the parliament to be uh, you know uh, set aside for women which will make a big difference in the end uh, some data child marriage rates 2014 to 2020 in fragile and conflict affected countries there is some new evidence that actually climate change is extremes are beginning to impact child marriages increase them unfortunately so there are all kinds of cascades in poor and low income communities that we don't necessarily understand 
it's not okay to just dismiss that this is stupid and should not be done. We need to con understand the context in which contexts in which they happen and when women feel helpless and uh, not having agency they tend to take decisions which they think will protect the girl even if it's a child marriage okay so you have to be careful so married by age 15 and married by age 18 uh, you can see here girls and so afghanistan girls and boys much higher percentage of married by 18 for uh, girls similarly pretty much everywhere true but you can see interesting data here bangladesh girls 15 and 18 but uh, boys is small very small in fact anybody nobody below 15 uh, but few uh, above eight uh, very nobody by 15 but a few by 18. similarly burkina faso cameroon uh, central african republic chad is there anywhere where boys number is higher not really at all right so chad democratic republic of congo ethiopia guinea iraq mali mozambique myanmar myanmar niger nigeria somalia south sudan uh, ukraine and yemen so Ukraine, the numbers are small for girls, nobody below 15, for boys, nobody below 15, but uh, married by 18 is still, uh, you know, around 8% for girls and maybe 3 or 4% for uh, boys. And the differences are much starker in other countries like Niger. Small fraction of boys are married by 18, but uh, almost 42% are married either by 15 or 18 very high for Niger more than it's almost 75 percent and for boys it's hardly five percent so this gender inequality is really 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 stark in some places uh, some messages the global community should learn from and invest in grassroots women's groups that are leading programs to respond to crises and rebuild livelihoods in their own communities women's groups can provide a platform for collective action by sharing labor and child care responsibilities, organizing transport, accessing, accessing credit and savings, and disseminating information. They are very good at forming self-help groups and taking care of many of the issues locally and in a very reliable way. They shame each other to pay back the loans when they borrow, you know, they create a common pool, people borrow, or the funding comes from outside, micro-loans, microfinance, etc. And women shame each other if they don't pay the pay back on time for example during the pandemic the self-employed women's association in india served as an intermediary between female farmers and the government helping women to sign up for government relief and organizing members to sell their vegetables other examples abound such as women's organizations in albania brazil ethiopia lebanon nepal and paraguay that are supported by un women Women's group, groups know their communities best and can reach those who are most in need. Beyond more financial support, women deserve a seat at the table to shape the policies and programs that directly impact their own lives and communities. You don't expect too much, you know, superhero expectations on women is not fair because uh, our regions of Indian subcontinent, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, India, and Pakistan have had women prime ministers and heads of states, presidents, some of whom have been as ruthless as any man. So it's not all carte blanche that women will always be kinder, gentler, but we do need to uh, take the average and see that women basically make things smoother, more decisive and kinder, in fact, and gentler. Okay, we'll come back and read the last chapter and then there are some additional uh, local actions that we will go through. So I'll leave this gender equality thing here, which is again, just about nine and a half minutes, which is still good to leave it independent, okay?